Welcome back to Convince Me Audio, your host, Koji CO. Proceeding from yesterday's video, unboxing the Sesvara Unveiled video here, or you can find the link down in the description section, we proceeded to test the unit with the Tsail HM1 as the headphone amplifier of choice, the Idian DAC, the Absolute for the DAC, and emitting the Idian Reclocker um, to actually get a good idea of what the DAC was doing, what the amplifier was doing, what the Sesvara was doing cleanly. This is a summit of summit tier setups, as obviously you can imagine, and I wanted to test the Sesvaras out of the box for a quick analysis. This is what I normally give to my Patreon members over at the Audio Lounge Telegram chat, where when a headphone lands on the desk, I give my first impressions within the first hour, and then we proceed to dissect this over the next four to six weeks while the review is being put together, and how much breaking first impressions and everything changes, and we refer back to it on a regular basis. And if you do want to join us over there, all of the description of the Convince Me Audio Ambush of Tigers Telegram chat will be down below. Let's proceed on to the Sesvara Unveiled a headphone that we've all been waiting for since the Sasvara got released, wondering what was possible. Bear in mind, this is predominantly a first impressions. A first impressions in the studio environment, because I did hear this back at Munich, uh, Munich High End documentary will be on the way for 2024 shortly. And in that environment, it's not your system, it's a brand new headphone, judging it is very inaccurate. So taking some of that information and this to hand, we now have a vague idea of what this is doing until the full review and full testing with all the equipment here, such as obviously the Red October, WA33 Elite JPS version, the Viva 845, the AIC10 Riviera, the Golden Atlantic DAC, and anything else that is lying around. So with that, let's proceed. The Haifeiman Sesvara Unveiled takes its cues from the Haifeiman Sesvaras. Having tested them side by side very quickly uh, after a couple of songs, it's a slightly brighter sounding headphone, especially in the mid-range category. I'm going to talk about the frequency response audibly uh, here a little bit, just by hearing we can see overlaying with the original Haifeiman Sesvaras that there is a dip in the 1.2K region with the original Sesvaras where this seems to have filled in. There seems to be a tiny bit of a rise in the upper mid range as well, and a tiny bit of elevation in the 6K region. A lot of these are so subtle that with pad braking and driver braking, there's a tendency to sort itself out or change. So we will bear this in mind, but as it stands out of the box, this was the impression I got. Now, what is the characteristics of the unit as soon as you take it out of the box? Well, the most obvious thing is it's far more resolving, incidentally. It's more akin to an electrostatic, even more than the original Sesvaras where we used to use, we're using the DCS Rossini Apex and Lina amp gave the most electrostatic feel. This feels like that right off the bat. It's a lot clearer those Sesvaras are extremely clear. It feels a bit more liquid. Incidentally, taking some tonal cues from the DCS Stealth, if you've heard that headphone, it's a touch more liquid, a touch more harmon in the mid-range category. I found that the stage for that quick test we did was probably on par, yet with far more air up here, up top. It seems to be combining a lot of the emphasis and characteristics of the Shangri-La Senior, the AB1266TC in the low end, and the usual Sesvara presentation. It's quite an interesting headphone. But detail retrieval and resolvability and cleanliness how liquid it sounded was the very first thing that stood out to me. Now, 
I did get this at Munich as well, but my worry was a little bit that there might be a problem with the low end and no. On the Idian DAC, the Absolute, I mean, we are pushing the boundaries of the sonic envelope for hi-fi. We're talking about an 80K system on the desk right now with some of the other equipment. Um, genuinely was as close to an electrostatic as I've ever heard a planar be, and hi from as far as already does this, but this is a lot closer. So much so that I think it might completely mitigate things like X9000 in this sort of setup. I obviously will be doing a variety of testing with the Holo Audio Bliss, the Firm or Stack with the Wandla, etc. in the lower categories, but predominantly the very first review that will come out will concentrate on pushing the drivers to its absolute limits. Let's break down the characteristics of the headphone. Using Infected Mushroom, uh, converting Vegetarians, it's one of the albums I use just to get a vague idea due to the transient speed and detail and impact and sub bass separation and layering. It's a fantastic way of getting a good idea of how capable a driver is. Bear in mind this is brand new and not broken in. Spatial cues of presentation and separation is outstanding. A bit more defined than the original Sasvara where images far away are far more thrown into relief they are just as distinct as the ones close to you here, for example. The liquid characteristics of the tuning tends to give vocals a very good presence, a very lifelike presentation. At the moment, the treble region in regards to timbre felt as though it might have been a little bit more off versus the OG Sasvaras that I have behind me. Obviously, those are like six years old and um, breaking will tend to change this a little bit. It was a little bit more crispy and I find it drivers take about 150 hours, including Sasvara's, to smooth itself out. But out of the box, I was genuinely surprised how cohesive and coherent and excellent it sounded. Base category, my worries, are and were completely alleviated, ex extremely punchy. Um, Idian kicks like a mule, the DAC. Output stage of a DAC is extraordinarily important. This is a, with the clock, it's a 45K DAC, so I will test with a wave drip signature in a slightly lower category and with Wandler and stuff uh, in the future and Hollow Audio Mate, etc. too. So don't worry, all of the categories will be covered. But for now, it did kick like a mule for electronic music, very fast transients, excellent spatial presentation, macro details and micro details. The sub bass textural information and weight and density was apparent. So even with the addition of the workings of the hi fi Vara unveiled, we found that we were getting more. When I switched back to the uh, original Sasvaras, I found it a little bit grainy sounding and a little bit dark. So comparing the two side by side, I would say only comparing these two headphones against each other, Hi-Fi Sasvara OG sounds a little bit more neutral dark versus Hi-Fi Sasvara Unveiled, which seems a bit more neutral light or bright, especially in the mid range. It's got far more of a cohesive mid-range and a more liquid mid-range and I think probably a bit more of a balanced mid-range. Um, there have been a couple of variations of the Sasvaras I've tested that I found somewhere better than others, like the one I've I have here has been the nicest I've experienced. Um, when I discussed with Dr. Fang video here, he said it's possible it's down to the cable and the core type and the oxidization or the pad breaking. There's a lot of factors to be taken into account, but predominantly when they measure in the lab, the Sasvaras are pretty much all the same when they're shipped out. So there is that to take into consideration too. The resolvability of the Sasvara unveiled, I would put probably on par with X9000, if not more. It's kind of insane for a planar. It's extremely quick and very dynamic, very punchy, airy. I think for some people, possibly breaking will change this and the full review will analyze this. 
there was that tiny bit of an emphasis in the 6K region where it feels as though it's a bit more spicy there akin to the AB1266 TC, the upper mid range being a little bit more filled in, I would say, a tiny bit. So it seems a bit more cohesive, but some people are sensitive to this too. The full review, 150 hours break-in, tubes, DAC swapping, will change a lot of these aspects. The takeaway is it's more resolving, it's more airy, definitely easier to drive, like considerably more headroom on HM1 where predominantly with Wave Dream Signature and Idian, um, I'm usually at like 60% of the pot, 70% of the pot. Uh, with May or Dave on the HM1, you usually max out, especially for classical music. It's just, it's, it's a low gain amp, it just doesn't have the headroom there. Uh, but with Idian and with Wave Dream Signature being a hotter signal and just a better output stage by May, curb stomping it to be honest with you i'm not surprised at the price of a mortgage um it's definitely where like i'm at 50 percent with idion and I'm, I'm i'm loud i'm at 76 db 70 db my usual listening level environment very very comfortably it's easier to drive how it scales how much headroom there is from equipment to equipment, how much better does it sound on lower end equipment versus original Sasvaras are all questions we will be answering. I hope this little video will curb some of the appetites until the full review and full analysis is underway. Until the next one, peace.